Gotta go live. Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Why is my camera not changed? It's supposed to auto transition to annually. <laughs> now the music's playing again. Come on, man. <laughs> What's your problem, dude? Go, all right, let's go back to this. Welcome back, everybody, to the creative economy. As you can see, we still haven't figured out how to use technology, even though we've been doing this show for seven months. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is our weekly interview series uh, where we talk to voices and players and builders from everywhere across the creator economy at large. We try to talk about topics that are relevant to both creators and builders. Um, this uh, is our deep dive series. So we interview folks and friends that we've met along the way. Uh, we do go live on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we hope you can tune in. If you're listening now or you're watching later, don't forget that we uh, usually stream over on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Uh, we stopped doing it on Twitch because we're just never going to make it there. Um, and <laughs> Twitter spaces. Uh, I think actually now we're, we're streaming live on Twitter video or Twitter live as well. Uh, cause we're, we've been using StreamYard for the last week or so. Um, but in case you want to find out about future episodes, head over to created.show. It is the official show page for, uh, the created economy. We also do long form content at createdeconomy.com. Although the long form content is pretty short in nature cause we haven't really posted anything. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's a good way to get on the mailing list uh, and not be notified about things. Um, so today we are happy to have our friend Matt. Ziv oh wait, did I do the deck? No, you see, I always forget to do something. Like I, you know, I at least this time. You're all I over the place today. I forgot the deck. You know, like why? Why are you guys like that? I don't know. We should be like this, right? <laughs> so, don't don't you have like a um, checklist? You usually have a checklist. Where would I put the checklist? I only have two 4K monitors. I would need a whole other screen to be able to see <laughs> that, right? Look, the look, 8K. Yeah. If anything, what I what I learned at CES is that there's like a 97 inch display that you can buy, and I'm sure you have. I a, need a the contact. I need the the AR contact lenses that that tell me things without having to look can, at like. If you didn't know, he, Greg spent all his money on his background lights. He has no money for the, the foreground there. I did. I did. Matt, yeah. you, no, you will be sad to know. Anyways. I have added no new lights since you were here last time. However, Ken is about to add more lights. So, um, <laughs> Ken's wait, wait, catching not, up. Not, not about to. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. Like I'm like, do I want to do an overhead? Do I want to do other things? Like, what kind of space do I have? It's yeah, yeah. Just all thinking. It, don't, it, don't, don't make it more don't, than it is. Don't worry. There's going to be like a, a 60 inch, you know, grid 
uh, this uh, matrix light uh, over Ken's head soon before we. Um, <laughs> but, uh, let's do a little bookkeeping here. Welcome back. This is episode 29. It's January 12th, 2022, in case you are listening. Um, we do have our friend Matt here with us. Uh, he is popping in as a last minute guest, by the way. So we didn't give him any time to prep. And just to make it fair, we didn't prep either. Um, we do have three shows every week, uh, one on Tuesday, which is our created work series where we uh, do kind of like an office hours approach, but for the next 12 weeks or so, we're going to be talking about how to launch and leverage web web three for creator economy startups. Uh, we do have our show today created economy. I should put these in the right order. Don't you think, um, where, uh, is our deep dive series on Wednesday afternoons. And on Friday, uh, Ken does a good job of pulling a lot of news together and I sit there and react to it, uh, for creative briefs. Um, but there's a lot going on. We have a lot of great content every week and we hope you can tune in at one of these episodes. Um, we are also the creative economy almost everywhere at creative economy on Twitter, YouTube. Oh, actually we are on YouTube now. We're the creative economy channel. Good job, Ken. Um, we have a Twitch. Um, um, and uh, also on Flipboard, Ken does curate all the links that we share uh, on a weekly basis over at uh, his Flipboard. Um, we are doing a drop of our AMA coin uh, as the official coin of the show. If you um, have a rally.io account, feel free to head over. You can scan that QR code if you're watching. I'll share a link uh, in a few minutes over to the Twitter space. Um, but it is free money, so uh, just go get some. Um, it won't cost you anything, I promise. Uh, we also do have a Slack um, and uh, where we have a lot of builders that get together and chat about different topics and whatnot. So now that all the bookkeeping's out of the way, welcome back, Matt. Did you want to just quickly introduce yourself, say hello, tell everybody where you're from, uh, and then let's jump into some topics. Yeah, thanks, boys. I appreciate you having me back. Uh, I know I was like playing probably D or E on your list, but you know, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm sure we there were some other uh, part of the alphabet, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's how I'm used to that my whole life. Um, no, I'm uh, I'm glad to be back on the show. Appreciate it. Um, excited to kind of you know talk Web three and and where 2022 goes for the creator economy as a whole, or whatever acronym or or you know verbiage <laughs> we're using now for the creator economy. I think it's a gig economy. We switched to creator. Um, where else are we going? Is it is it still creator economy? Is that what we're still using? I don't know. I've heard people talk about, you know, what's, we talk about the passion economy, enthusiasm economy, the creator economy, web 3.1, web 3, web 3.5. I don't know. Web 4 is about to come out of the woodworks uh, where that's more uh, like the combination of the metaverse with, you know, blockchain and virtual reality. So who the hell knows right now? Yeah, I feel like we're trying to jam them all together, too, and give them all a cool name. Well, let's step back for a sec. So, Matt, historically, you have not been a big fan of Web3, right? Um, not necessarily if not a fan, but I think you just sort of thought there was a lot of FUD sort of associated with it, right? Um, I'm curious how your uh, thought process around Web3 has evolved, you know, um, over the last, you know, several uh, months and weeks um, as things have moved forward. I gave, I, I gave the analogy, or I still do, that, you know, Web3 was like the modern day gold rush, right? And for any of those familiar with that side of history, um, there was these guys, you know, called, uh, it was called snake oil. These guys that used to sell, you know, wares to people that, you know, gold flakes or stuff that could, you know, help them while they're, uh, you know, on the trail to get to California and get the gold. I feel like uh, we see a lot of that currently. And, um I, I'm hesitant, you know, because my job is always I have to decipher everything that's going on in the social world and then relay that on to the talent we manage. Um, and I feel like, you know, a lot of the Web3 was still is being forced. Um, you know, people that are leading it, uh, you know, shouldn't be leading it. Uh, I see. You know, I think that's my main issue with it is that I don't there's no like clear leaders of it yet. And the ones that are pushing it the hardest are venture capitalists. And I feel like that's just really not what Web3 is all about in general. Um, you and so that's... Creators use it? Like, I mean, the, the, you, FamePick represents or works with a lot of creators. Are you seeing them embracing Web3? And like, what does, what does a Web3 creator look like these days? Or what could they look like? We have, uh, so we manage, well, we're at oh, over 300 creators now um, that we manage directly. Uh, I think we've had maybe one or two Macs that have tried to dabble in any type of Web3 yet. 
Um, now, obviously, you know, we, we get offers all the time around, uh, you know, NFTs and, and some type of payment through Web3, which is awesome, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing in terms of like creators doing it on their own yet. Are people using or leveraging, are, are they trying to work with creators, I guess, like they did in the, in the traditional realm? Like, can you be a spokesperson or can you review it? Or like, is that what's how they're approaching you? Yeah, which is actually kind of, you know, it's slightly upsetting, to be honest, because, you know, I think we talked on the show when I was on last time, like one of the biggest issues with, you know, creators and the creator economy is how they receive payment, right? A lot of the Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the stuff is them trying to make a living. And unfortunately, Web3 has kind of opened up even a bigger issue with, you know, how do you validate this form of payment, right? Like brands or partners or whoever's launching it is trying to then obviously pay you in some type Sometimes of Web3 Web three three form. form. Mm -hmm. um, and, but for creators, they don't, they don't know how to validate it. How much is it worth? How much is it going to be worth? So you went from like, getting paid very little or free product, right? Or, you know, gifting, so to speak, um, to now like even less than gifting, which is like digital gifting. Um, so yeah. It's been hard to decipher for, you know, us as talent managers, as brand managers to figure out like how legitimate is this? Is it actually going to be worth something? We, we have to give a dollar amount to the creator when we, when we pitch it to them. Um, and don't you think, um, I mean, I wouldn't call these coin or at least like the main ones like Bitcoin or, or Ethereum, they're somewhat stable, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. they're not, they're not like, they're not like they used to be, right? Like crapping, the, you know, shitting the bed every other day or something, right? Like, um, but it, it, there is sort of a USDC sort of equivalent, I guess, right? Like that you could sort of peg it at the current value to, um, I yeah, I I I, I see this sort of, I, I guess, like if someone was like, oh, we have this new coin, and we we're that's what we see. Yeah, that sounds like nonsense to me. Also, I wouldn't yeah. want to do it for that. Um, but I, I do think, um, yeah, I can see where that is problematic, um, you know, sort of in trying to interpret the value. But leaving aside, so, so I think this is interesting in the angle, just I guess the where influencers are going to sit or creators are going to sit sort of in the marketing spectrum for sort of like whatever Web3 becomes. Um, but there's two topics I think I do want to talk a little bit more about. Like One is just, I think... Um, we were talking about this when we were chatting earlier, uh, like last week, I think just about like that potentially there's like a renaissance coming in sort of the creator influ influencer economy again, because of other changes in the ecosystem, not related to Web3, but just more about like cookies and things like that. Um, so that's kind of like one topic area that I'm curious about your thoughts on like tra trajectory, you know, sort of of the space from that, from the traditional realm. And then I think the second topic that I would love to get into a little bit is um, you know, sort of the framing of like, or, or where do you think Web3 does serve some, or should or could offer some value to sort of creator economy itself? Um, so let's start with the first one though, right? Like Apple has made a bunch of changes, um, you know, the sort of cookie apocalypse is sort of upon us, right? Um, what are the implications of that, I guess, like for creators and the creator economy, and I guess the industry as a whole? Yeah, I think... Uh that is one of the main reasons that I, I see that's fueled the growth the last 18 months, right? It, it kind of was like, I think, coincidental. I don't think Apple timed it that way and, and Google timed it that way. Um, I think it was probably on their roadmap. Hey, iOS 14, we're going to launch this. They probably did that five years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm, um, right. But no, it's that's really helped validate influencer marketing, you know, creator marketing as a whole. Because now you have to find other ways to tap into these audiences because it, as, a, as a marketer, it's become very hard to target. Um, and that, they, traditionally, that was my background. So I, mm -hmm. I spent many, 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 many years in that trying to figure out how to tap into to certain audiences and you know, drive the most ROI for every dollar you're spending. Yeah, and I guess and the, the premise, I think, uh, this has sort of been the emergent thing with the, why influencers, I think, were effective marketing uh, marketers as a whole is just that there is a level of authenticity that a brand has a very, very hard time sort of like, you know, and I'll, I'll use the word emulating because like, I feel like brands just dispossess the ability to be authentic. Um, right. Like, like they're very controlled environments and sort of like devoid of uh, most of the, the trappings that would allow them to be real. Right. Um, but 
what secondarily happened now, I think, is that as these audiences become less accessible because we were so good at using data to target people and reach people, yeah. right, that now not only are influencers the most, um, I think, effective way to do it, but it's also the effective way to target, right? And so that's sort of yes. like what, we, what we've won, right, like now. Well, and, you know, prop, uh, contrary to popular belief, right? they do own their audience, right? People don't, people forget that when you're posting natively in your own feed, right? You own that channel, right? You always have, yes, brands can show up in your feed, quote unquote, right? But yep. for the majority of the time, you're the one that owns what's being said to your followers, right? Uh, which is hard. A brand can't do that, right? Because you're competing against all other brands in someone's feed, right? There's no brand specific feed. Uh, and I think that's the one thing a lot of people don't realize when they when they're doing some type of influencer marketing or or they've yet to do influence marketing. That's the yeah. key: is these 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 talents do own their channel, like not physically, but in terms of a marketing sense, they absolutely do because they can control the message. They're the one that can say, hey, "I'm going to say this stuff a thousand times in a row to get my yeah. point across." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, the. I, I certainly hear the points about sort of the challenges of being platformed to somewhere else, but I almost feel like, and, and we, you and I pick fights with people all the time about this stuff, um, but I almost feel like you're platformed because you weren't smart enough to continue to own your audience, right? Not because the platform actually has limitations in the middle, right? Like you always had the ability to say, hey, give me your email, right? Like, Hey, mm -hmm. like, give me your phone number, website, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, send me your phone number. Like you always had them. The, the, there's no limitation as I know of in any platform that actually makes that like illegal, right. For you to do that. And the best creators do that. Like the ones yeah, you see, right. the, like, you know, the, you know, you know, just I'll, I'll mention them because they're probably the most mentionable. Like the Paul brothers have done an amazing job at that. They're one of the first ones to go the phone number route. Um, Eric, the other, you know, very popular YouTuber friends with the Paul brothers. Uh, he, I've heard he actually makes more money now through his creator course than he does through any type of sponsorships. Oh, and so that's uh, the guy with $300 and, course though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. But I, I've heard, I've heard phenomenal things about it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, you learning directly from the source of someone that's done it. Um, you know, I think that's a whole, obviously a whole industry in and itself. A lot of people have gone that route. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they're using the networks. They're manipulating the networks for their own good. You can do it. Uh, everyone just, can do it. Everyone right. can do it. From day one, you can do it, right? Um, it's not too late, by the way. So if you are listening and you haven't done it yet, I've said this in the past, you're an idiot. So go do it, right? Like you should not be building a business where you don't know how to identify your customers and speak directly to them. Like that's just business 101, right? Well, they... The example I'll give and I give to a lot of people when I, when they, you know, they tell me you need to own your audience and I kind of laugh at them because imagine you're selling uh, in retail, right? You're a retail goods manufacturer of any kind, right? Mm -hmm. It's like not having a website and selling it on your own. Um, that That's the analogy I give. Of course, you're going to do that, right? Of course, you're going to try to get in every store you can because it, it, you know, spreads the message and gives you a better chance of selling more products. And it's yeah. the same thing for any creator. You want to go to every channel and use that free traffic to drive as many audience members or fans or followers that you can. Like, right. don't limit yourself. Don't say, oh, I'm leaving these platforms because I want to own my audience. Then, then where are you going to generate new audience from? How are you going to get new followers? You have to do it yourself. You're then responsible, which is difficult. Actually, this is a good point. I know you've made it many times and we've shared this sentiment that, you know, um, I, I made a comment the other day in one of the DM groups. I mean, I said that, you know, everything human and it, you know, leads to centralization, right? And so we point this out all the time that social networks cannot be decentralized. It defeats the purpose of the social part, right? Um, and, and so like a lot of folks who are involved in Web3, they're like, we need everything decentralized. And I'm like, it's never going to work that way, right? Like, you're misinterpreting what the decentralization means in sort of when they speak of decentralizing things, right? Like um, it's removing the ability of like a provide a state to remove you or, you know, sort of stop you or censor you in some way. I, I agree that those parts are valuable, right? Like there are a lot of people who inadvertently have their content taken down without them, yeah. you know, um, for like random, you know, seemingly sometimes random sort of changes in algorithms or interpretations of things, right? Um, 
But at the same time, that doesn't mean you're allowed to now go to c- c- copyrighted music and art and other stuff over <laughs> in other places, right? Like, yeah. like th- this is the, always the catch-22. Like, yes, you hate YouTube for send being centralized, but they're also protecting the rights of thousands, tens of thousands of creators by making sure their music's not stolen, their their media is not stolen, right, in one way or another. Who's going to do that on the blockchain? By the way, you can't do it on the blockchain because you can't even remove it. Exactly. That's – I don't – I've, I've, that's been my comment uh, as well, right? You gotta. There's this issue I have with Web three specifically around and decentralization, decentralization around the security aspect, right? We're obviously the last five years of the internet, we focused a lot on security, right? Mm-hmm. Apple's made changes. Obviously, we just talked about the, you know, the hiding, you know, hiding, uh, you know, UDIDs and that, you know, getting rid of the cookies and all that. Um, but I feel like Web3 hasn't really addressed it. Are we willing to sacrifice kind of security in, for this, you know, supposedly more secure network? Um, what I mean by that is like every single day you now see some type of NFT broken, NFT wallet hacked, um, some type of crypto scam. Like I feel like the crypto scams have like surpassed the Nigeria ones on Craigslist very quickly, <laughs> except they actually get money <laughs> and they get, and they get hundreds of millions. And so my point is if you're involved in any of this stuff, what options do you have after some type of theft hack happens yeah. in a normal system? There's, there's policies, there's security, there's insurance in the crypto world, in the web three world, who is doing that? I think yeah. that is my biggest hesitation around you know diving head first in because we know this is going to happen it's already happened hundreds of times i think these things are coming by the way um you know look in fairness to yeah and a lot of people are like well it's been 10 years since bitcoin was made or whatever but that's not really web3 right like that was the blockchain you know i think it's almost like um you, you know, we're, we're really starting now kind of like we're early days, right? Like when we started on credit cards, there was none of this. You couldn't even like, I, I remember hooking up the first time ever hooking up, um, the hell was it like Braintree or something like maybe like 15 <laughs> years ago or like some hard ass crap like that, like to do credit card processing online. Um, and it was so much work, right? Like, and that was like a, a huge jump and leap, right? Like to getting to that point, I, I, I do think some of these tools will be coming to sort of this ecosystem as well. I'll share one thing I, I saw. I saw this great video. Um, it was actually a developer video. It was like a coding video or something like that on YouTube. But the way that they described Web3 is actually, to me, I think one of the more meaningful versions of it, which is just that um, Web3 is actually a technology layer, right? Not a, uh, right? And so at, at heart, what it provides is two primary functions. One is persistence and the other is payment, Right. And I think about like those two factors, I always seem to revert back to that when, when I sort of get into the messiness that's above, I'm like, these are the two functions we have new um, ways to innovate with, right? Like we can do new and interesting things with persistence and we can do new and interesting things with payments. And when we start to look at it from the technology point of view, not all of the cultural stuff that sort of exists on top of it, right? Um, that's where I think the opportunities do lie for <clears throat> for sort of uh, the creator economy as a whole, right? Because we start to say like, what are new ways to sort of persist information, right? And that, and I think what this is opening to us is not, um, you know, the rights management stuff, I think is a very big topic. And I don't, and, and by the way, most NFTs, for example, right now, we don't have like proper like rights management uh, built into any of those things either, right? Like you're no. usually buying the contract, but not the content of the contract, right? Um, but you know, I do think like, for example, loyalty, CRM, um, relationships, um, and, and a lot of the utility that NFTs offer, I think is where the exciting part of the NFT space is. The art stuff to me is, um, I think it's great. Like, it, you know, it's cool. Like there are a lot of artists or creators that are artists, right? And have never had a feasible path to, or more, more importantly than a path to selling their art. I think they've always had that. What they get is a new market to sell it to, Right. Um, and I'll take that. I'll take that for them. I feel like we saw the same thing when, you know, the, the Patreons, the gum roads, all those, uh, you know, buy me a coffee angle mm-hmm. came out, right. There was, yeah. there was, I don't even know if they, we even consider that web too. I'm not going to get into those that, but, 
Uh, I feel like we're seeing that revolution now for those type of artists, right? Ones that worked digitally could produce digital goods, um, struggled to monetize that in the early days. And now, you know, with all those new platforms, they're able to do it very well, right? Course creators, yeah. any type of gig service. And, and so like, I, I see your point on the artist side with NFTs. Um, I, you know, it's and opened, it, it opened the door. Right? So performers, right? So I think like the NFT to me has just become like the new receipt. And then now suddenly receipts have like a whole bunch of new ways to leverage them, right? Like, so I, for example, like we're building some stuff for Web3 now. I look at NFT like personally, like almost like just a new OAuth endpoint, right? It's like, great, connect another thing. And just like I could have looked at your credit card with Plaid to see transactions, I could look at your, your wallet, your NFT wallet to see, do you own a piece of my art? And yeah. if you do, this is, I think, the biggest threat to Patreon, uh, honestly, right? Because I do think like what Patreon was doing, Patreon in a lot of ways to me is really just become like a, a well-positioned payment processor, right? But like there wasn't a whole lot of other value being offered sort of beyond. They use the Stripe. <laughs> Pretty sure Patreon <laughs> well, well, uses sure. Stripe. <laughs> they yeah. use Stripe, but, um, but you know what I mean is that they were basically like a payment layer between you and your fans. And that was the real yeah. value prop of, of the platform, right? Like with a minimal amount of delivery mechanism built into it, right? Um, but Gumroad offers similar things, right? Like you could sell a subscription on Gumroad, right? Yep. And you could, you could do it. I think like Patreon was great because they were earlier, right? But I think like if you think about now, oh, you have you come to my concert? Now you can get into like the live backstage feed, right? Like the, the receipt, the ability to leverage that receipt of purchase um, or participation in online things like consumption of content, et cetera. That opens up a lot of remixing, I think, for creators to now apply their creative juices to like new types of value they may offer their fans. And I, and I would love to see that come organically, in my opinion. I feel like right now it's 100% forced. We're, we're trying to take that square peg, sh shove it in the, you know, the round hole. Like, you know, I saw the Dallas Mavericks. I know Cuban's a big supporter of Web3 mm -hmm. trying to do some type of, you know, ticket-based NFT. And I feel like they're just doing it to do it. And they're just trying to like, maybe it's more of a proof of concept for them. Uh, Probably. But I yeah. feel like- it's very much the case, I would think, for a lot of early stages, early types of, I guess, phases of technology right i mean you're, you're always going to be like let's just throw something against the wall see if it sticks and if it sticks we'll call it a proof of concept and kind of push yeah. it and see if we can repeat it right and if more people pick it up then we actually have a a, a i guess a concept and then, and then like an actual execution and therefore it kind of mutates to become something tangible we can see oh this is the reality of what web3 is i don't think people know exactly like I think the only thing that's been proven in terms of what Web3 is or whatever this definition you call you people define it as is going to be it's crypto and NFTs and the metaverse. Those are the things that people, yeah. I think 99% of people probably agree on when you say what is Web3. That's probably what they think about. Uh, and, and involved in that are a lot of scams and a lot of uncertainty because they're like, I know what it, I can tell you what it, what it is, but I can't tell you what it looks like. Because I, they, they you don't. Know, you know like, when you see it. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like pornography in a in a way by that by, by like legally that like I, I don't know what it is, but I can tell you when I see it, right? And and that's my my concern is that you look at like sure okay the Web three great I'm all for innovation let's see where this goes I can see like what what NFTs are doing and, and all the promise but what happens after that what happens you know 500 miles down the road uh with with this because. You know, you, the power of the blockchain is there, but why are we blowing up Web 1 and Web 1.0, 1, 1 Web 2.0 <clears throat> and going all in on Web 3? Like, what is what is that? Like, why is that? And how is that better than what we have now? Because to Greg's point, you know, you can't blow up social and say, hey, we're going on Web 3. Where are you getting the network effect? You don't yeah. have, like, you know, I'm going to do my NFT. Who are you going to market to? You you don't have Facebook, you don't have Twitter, you don't have YouTube, you don't have Patreon or all this other stuff. Who are you going to sell it to? Like, and that's the point. And I think, you know, you, I think some people are saying 2.5 is the way to go. And I think that's probably the best way to go right now until we figure out what the hell 3.0 actually looks like. So. That was uh, one of my more famous tweets of uh, 2021 was, 
a lot of people are trying to bite the hand that feeds them. Like you just said, Ken, if you, if you give it up altogether, all the current networks, where are you going to go? Like, where, where are you going to get that traffic? And no, no, to my knowledge, no web three or two and a half or 2.9, <laughs> no service or company has solved that. They, they're solving the after part. Like you already have your audience built and maybe you want to port them somewhere. Sure. But as we all, as any legitimate creator knows, or any even entrepreneur knows, you have to always work at your audience, right? Just like your customer base. People will come, come and go. You got to always add new ones. And I don't think anyone solved where you get new anyone from in the Web3 world. Where, does, where, do they, where do the customers come from? Where do the followers come from if you don't have these social networks? Well, we, I mean, we even talk about how discovery is actually still a problem in Web2, Right. Like, um, so if it's a problem in web two with highly centralized systems, like, can you imagine what it's like in web three? Right. Like when you have anonymized wallet addresses as the IDs of people, right. <laughs> the metaverse wouldn't even know who's who actually you imagine trying right. to, if you're a marketer trying to target people like, is that their actual self? Is that their alter ego? Is that their, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, no, go ahead again. No, no, Greg, I, I was just saying, like, I think, you know, your point, what you're saying earlier in terms of, like, what you, the, the phrasing, the words you use, like, loyalty and, uh, like, ownership of data or something like to that, to that point, what you're saying earlier, earlier, Greg, I think the, when you look at from the creator standpoint, that's probably the most applicable stuff that you can take away from Web3, right? It's like, okay, you know who your audience is. You own that data. Like, yeah, you kind of own that data now through Web 2, but you have a little bit of more sense of ownership in Web 3. So you, th there's that privacy and sort of security-wise, not like, but there's still a lot of ambiguity in Web 3. Uh, so that's why I was wondering, is like, what does a Web 3 creator look like? And Matt, you're saying that only a couple of your, of your, of your customers uh, on Fanpick are actually going in on Web 3. Yeah. And most of them still web two, and I think that's that's a smart way to play it because just like sure you want to build a community, go explore web three, but don't go full in because you're. You know, I mean that's that's dangerous because you could be privy to a scam. And I get legitimately why some creators are choosing to do NFTs if they're an artist, if they are a designer or something, <clears throat> want to find ways to really make money off of this. Then sure, NFTs might be the way to go because. Greg, how many NFTs have you bought just based off of, off of the way that you make know the artist or you like the artist style? Today? I think that's oh. well. <laughs> how many today, right? But I mean, it's general, right? I mean, you can ask people why, what, maybe why they buy bought an NFT, and it's like, oh, they they made they like the artist style. I would imagine the same thing for like the Board Eight Yacht Club, right? It's like, why would people tend to buy them because they're popular, they're nice design, it's typical art, right? But then what happens? after that like what is what happens after the purchase and, and i think that's what people haven't quite solved yet there are there are startups that are working on it i don't think creators have quite fully grokked like how they want to use nfts and if there are people that are listening and are watching that are artists or creators that are in nfts and see the potential afterwards let me know because i'd be happy that i would love to learn about that uh but i mean that's kind of like what do you do after that i mean do you unlock a, a membership? Do you do what? Like what, what's next to, to keep people engaged and grow your community? And I don't, I don't know. And do you have those? Are you asked those questions uh, from your from your creators, Matt? Yeah. So we, I think that's the point we're at, right? I think you know, Web three is probably multiple years away from any type of mass adoption. And, and that's the issue we're facing as, you know, as operators, as talent managers is simply, you know, we don't have all the answers yet. And I don't feel comfortable giving my talent, you know, direction if I don't have all the answers, because I could be sending them into, you know, God only knows where. And I think, you, I mean, we've already seen it, right? If you were to, you know, going back to it, bite the hand that feeds you, cut off your current resources and jump into this thing and something happens, right? We saw today, you know, uh, Kim Kardashian and, and uh, Floyd Mayweather got sued for their uh, coin or crypto. I don't even remember what they launched, Ethereum Max or something. Um, but if you, let's say you're not Kim Kardashian, which obviously has a million other revenue streams, or Floyd Mayweather, a million other revenue streams. If, they, if you're a creator and you went all in and something happened, you got scammed, you got sued, where do you go? There's no, there's no recourse for you. Your career could be over. 
And that's why I, I struggle a lot with the leadership of the Web3 you know, movement, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, the community right now. The leaders right now are the ones that ha- already ha- either have a lot of money or are set to make a lot of money. And, yeah. You know, that's why I don't, you know, I mean, if, if Web3 was here, Jake Paul or Mr. Beast or Colin and Samir, one of these massive YouTubers would be all for it. They'd be all in and they'd show you the way. And we just haven't seen it yet. And until I one of those guys gets in or one of those women gets in. Yeah. I think we're close though, Matt. Like, I, so I guess like, you know, where I think this fits in the, the, you know, the spectrum of things is we were just dipping our toe into sort of like the direct to audience sort of realm of like monetization, right? Like, you know, we just barely got here. Right. Um, like it feels like when we started this show, web three was like nowhere you know, in the, in the level of like consensus or forming around it, right? Like then, like seven months ago, than it is like right now, right? But I do think it really is an extension of the direct audience model, right? Like that we were talking about. Agreed. Because I, what I think it offers is actually like a lot of what we were hoping Zealous would be, right? Like is that it's really about like how do you turn a commute, create a community of people, and then sort of like use that membership model like with that community of people, right? And I think like a, a creator could protect themselves by not like selling anything more than access to themselves, right? Like Cameo was proven, you can do it in a transactional way and deliver it, but you could also deliver that in an ongoing way, right? And a lot of people are setting up discords and do, I think of like, where I think the short-term win for creators is going to be is probably in that arena, right? Like where you're using it as an alternative form of paying, right? And what it means is that the folks who have made more or early adopters, or maybe you have like a, a ton of Gen Z people who like put all their money into this already, you know, where they don't feel like, where they don't spend dollars, they spend crypto though. Like there's people who like, like it's, it's an entirely different universe of money, right? I thought about that exactly like yesterday, Greg, is it's almost, remember when this massive trend in checkout became adding PayPal, yeah adding uh oh even now right after pay yep. and affirm all these other payment options check out mm-hmm. with amazon yep. i feel like the first iteration of someone that's really going to win you know war battle number one of web three is going to be some type of checkout payment extension because you're right the people that want to pay with crypto want ways to do it they feel more secure doing it that way yeah you know that's the angle they want coinbase commerce by the way um i've used it um it's like the stripe of crypto Right. Like you literally you you can link to it just like Stripe. It has a landing page. People can choose whatever currency they have and it, it maps back to a denominate a USD denomination basically. And you you can check out with crypto or you can literally put a stripe button there and a crypto and a Coinbase button there and boom, you can like offer the option of choosing either one. Right. Um I also think what happens or what this facilitates, this is what we're working on now, is if you take what Twitch, I think Twitch has been an amazing example of like what's possible, but it hasn't escaped Twitch's walls, right? The idea of like channel points and of a community supporting each other, members supporting each other to be part of that community, all of those kinds of um, uh, interactions, most creators don't have the leverage that Twitch actually affords them unless they're on Twitch, right? Like, why doesn't a YouTuber have that? Why doesn't a musician have that, right? Like, why doesn't, like, someone who produces uh, poetry or writing on a regular basis have that? I think, like, unbundling that. I think Web3 is an easy way to actually accomplish some of those mechanics, even if you hide them, right? But it's a way to do a lot of those things, right? Because that's that community aspect of saying, like, you know, like, when we're talking about um, 100 true fans, 1,000 true fans, all these other things, right? Yeah. I believe that those are viable pathways, right? But I believe like Web3 may facilitate getting to the kinds of dollars you need to make it sustainable faster. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it, Again, it might not be the Web3 we know now might not obviously be what Web3 becomes. Yeah. And I, I think we'll fit, you know, I think 2022 will be that year, the year of transition. Um, and again, that, I think as we all kind of mentioned earlier in the show, like, that's my biggest issue with it from jumping in is it's, it's in its infancy, right? Like you don't throw an infant into the water to see if they can swim in a pool, right? You got to teach them how to swim. Yeah. So I don't want like, you know, people that are listening that are creators and whatnot, don't jump in without at least getting some type of knowledge, right? Dip your toe in. Just like you went on a new network, right? If, yeah. if, when TikTok came out, all the Instagram creators didn't cancel their Instagram accounts and turn them off. No, they, they pushed the users from Instagram over to TikTok, 
All right. Same thing if you launch a Twitch channel, you do the same thing. Oh, I'm going from YouTube to Twitch. You, you push them over slowly. Um, but I feel like right now, the, the kind of the talking heads in the Web3 world are like, you got to get in now or you're going to be too late. Right. They're trying to like shove it down your throat. And, and that's my issue with it. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting observation I had. Um, and pl probably plenty of other people had this as well. Greg, you were talking about how, uh, you know, people are transacting, wanting to transact on cryptocurrency and everything like that, or on Bitcoin. And it's like they set up these whole new things. But real interestingly, like a lot of the platforms that are embracing or that have embraced uh, payments through crypto are web two companies right i mean yes stripe is doing this as well uh you, you talk about coinbase commerce but paypal is doing this what well. square has yeah. embraced uh, uh bitcoin and or being able to buy and sell like paypal has done it through venmo uh, and all these other things so a lot of these traditional well web two traditional payment providers are embracing paying through uh transactions through through uh, crypto of some of some sort, so it's, it's not like you necessarily need to uh, blow up the ex entire financial system and, and start new in order to transact through crypto. I mean, it's the so that's kind of like you don't necessarily need to you know redo everything. You don't need to scorch the earth. You can just go with Web two with two point and, and find some happy medium in between and in order to get your in order to advance things in a I guess more deliberate path and to to get to to what you want as opposed to just saying. To, to Matt, what you're saying is like, everyone dive into the Web3 waters and see and, and, and try it out and build stuff. And, you know, Instagram and social media, be damned. Like, that's old school. Well, I, mean, I feel like that's a lot of the stuff we see, right? The guy, the people that are, like I said, leading the charge right now are ones saying that Web2 isn't working, right? There is no ownership. It's too centralized. Too many companies, you know, have controlling rights. But, Ken, as you just mentioned, it's those same companies that are probably going to be part of Web3 and hold the lion's share of it. So how is decentralization going to happen? Yeah, so right? they're, all, they're, not, they're not going to leave it. If they think it's the future, they're going to join. So, Matt, like, what are you seeing in terms of like a little bit off top, away, moving away from the uh, Web3 side of things? Like, we're at the start of 2022. Like, what, what are you seeing in terms of the, the landscape for creators this year? Like what, any any interesting predictions that you see besides like the, the move or the embracing of Web3 of some sort? Um, I think there's, there's two, two things I would like to make a prediction on. I think one, um, if we can finally, you know, break free of this pandemic in some way, I think events uh, with a Web3 element um, become very popular probably summertime, right? When we notoriously, I guess the pandemic, you know, doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, you'll see some type of concert or events or pay-per-view. Um, we'll see creators, you know, very heavily focused there. Um, and I also think we'll start to see a lot of creators replace traditional celebrity roles, meaning it could be in, in movies where they become actors or actresses or, you know, creators, become the main mm -hmm. spokesperson for certain brands. I think now that the industry is validated, you'll start to see it. I think, you know, Super Bowl last year, we saw a couple. Um, Super Bowl coming up. I'm sure there's a bunch of creators booked for certain elements there. And then that will really help, you know, these brands push their message off of traditional TV and onto social where we know a lot of stuff lives. Um, and where creators, you know, control a lot of those messaging. Yeah, I was happen to I happened to watch like the Amazing Race, so that's back on the air now. Um, and I happened to be watching it, and I noticed like there's this couple that was on there. I'm like, wait a second, I recognize them and <laughs> because they were on, um, you know, a major TV show or in a movie or anything. Like they were, I had recognized them because I'd seen them on Facebook. I'd seen people share their content on. They're 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 content creators. They're they're like the. I forget the name of like the Hollingsworth or something like that. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I recognize the name, the, 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 the and I'm like, Oh, I had watched their, their videos throughout the pandemic because people, as you cycle through Facebook, there's a lot of people that share those type of things. And I'm like, I wonder, and then I, there's other creators that were in this on the amazing race as well. So as you're talking about like your, your prediction, you're starting to see creators kind of become celebrities, like 
societal celebrities and outside of like the internet, the digital age. Like I, I can kind of see that as well. Like I was wondering if like the Amazing Race was like the entire cast would be made up of, you know, sure. creators, which like the low like the Paul brothers could be on there. Can you imagine? Uh, that would have been hilarious, right? I mean, well, the the angle is right. If I'm a TV show producer, these guys, these creators have built in audiences, so it's automatic amplification. Anyone watching, their audience is going to come watch. I mean, if you look back on it, that's where the term guest star came from on traditional TV. You wanted to take that star's audience, whatever show they were on, and bring them to this other show. Um, more currently, uh, if you guys watch any type of cable TV, uh, like all those Fox shows with like FBI and, you know, they always do these like mashup episodes where they get the characters right. from the other shows. And that's, so that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to they'll sell higher ad slots so they, they can drive higher viewership for that one yeah. show, the crossover event or whatever they call it. Uh, now, so I have a question, I guess this prediction, I think, sounds reasonable, relevant, um, but it seems like for kind of the upper tier, do you have a prediction or thoughts about sort of, I guess, like the middle, right? Um, you know, what, what, what's going to happen with the, the folks who aren't, don't have kind of that kind of escape velocity, maybe. Like us, perhaps? <laughs> uh, maybe a little bigger than us. <laughs> I think we'll start to see a lot more um, branding, um, you know, self product launches. Um, from creators. We saw that quite a bit during the pandemic. And I think, um, you know, as, you know, we, we roll out of this, hopefully we'll see more of that. I know the, the, what's his name, KSI and then Logan Paul launched prime, the drink, uh, you know, Chamberlain coffee has been big. Um, you know, obviously Kylie Jenner's makeup line. And there's, there's whole, I think Colin and Samir did a whole segment on, you know, creator products. I think we'll start to see a lot more of those and I'm sure we'll see digital versions, right? some type of web three element. And to me, that's where I, I think the mainstream will start to switch and the creators will start to switch to web three is when one of these leaders of, of the creator industry, you know, launch something, which I, I, I know will happen this year. Do you see um, like more of the, the houses sort of continuing or sort of like this, you know, kind of Jay-Z model of like producing, you know, sort of are bringing up others. You see that model sort of like uh, evolving more, or do you think that that was uh, that, that they're not cut out to sort of scale that? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I haven't seen too many of those pop up lately. What does that sound? Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I I think that's always going to happen. I think we'll start to see, more, like I said, more traditional TV shows with creators. Mm -hmm. um, so if if it becomes Big Brother, you know, Instagram edition. <laughs> We might, we might see that. Um, yeah. but I don't know if you'll see like another hype house thing. You might, but I don't think those are really proven to be that. Well, popular. I guess I mean more of like the TikTok houses. Like, do you yeah. see more of that sort of like a creators getting together or starting to like start to represent, I guess, other creators, you know, you know, kind of like from a talent point of view. I see it at the, at the collaboration level. I don't mm -hmm. know if I see it from like a management level. Um, yeah. yeah. Like I think we'll see that explode. At least I mean, that, that's my hope for us. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, it goes back to like the creators need education. They need help, right? A lot of these guys are being, you know, not forced, but, you know, jumping into the whole entrepreneurship business side. But they're not trained for it. a lot of these kids are young. Right? A lot of them didn't even graduate college. They don't have any sense of, or, you know, maybe they had a real business job and now they're business owners, a lot of them, right? They might even have employees, assistants. So I think there, hopefully there's a trend of education. I don't think that happens this year. I want it to, but I still think we're a little ways away from that. But I think that's one of the biggest needs in the industry is these creators need help, right? Whether it's business side, you know, audience growth, editing, you know, brand managers, talent managers, there's, there's a, you know, the industry has created these massive other needs, you know, as the creators grow and become, you know, legitimate celebrities. Yeah. Do you worry? Like, are you, how do you view Google's, uh, Google, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn's development of creator management tool uh, teams? Like, are they, a good thing for creators? Are they just ultimately looking out for their company's bottom line to 
to keep creators happy so that you know they can further grow their product and usage are they going to be helping you guys out in any I've way? never seen one of them do it well all the all the, the those main company owned products are usually pretty bad um, usually a third party I mean you could look at it just from the you know just think of the influencer platform side right Facebook has a marketplace TikTok has a marketplace Instagram has a marketplace but you know, you see Maverick and Aspire IQ and those companies, those are the ones that kind of lead the way. Uh, I, I like he's Ken, I think like you said, I think they do it just to kind of keep the creators happy, so to speak. Um, I don't I don't think it's a focus for them. I think it's just kind of a, a necessity. So do you like what are you seeing in terms of actually there's one thing I wanted to to bring up uh, while we have like probably a few minutes left here. Yeah. Um, there's a tweet I saw, and, and we talked about this earlier on. Um, let me, I can share this share this tweet here. But you, you, there was a tweet that your your company FamePick uh, posted today. This, well, let's say this morning. Um, and it's saying the top influencer marketing brand in 2017 uh, ran approximately 175 campaigns per post. Uh, in 2021, the top brand uh, ran 28 about 2,800. It's a 1,500% increase. Can you ex can you further elaborate on that? Like, why is this significant, and what kind of caused this to increase? And lastly, why should we all care about this? So we in when we got I got started in Fame Pick in 2016. And back then, influencer marketing was, you know, it was classified as experiential, right? Meaning maybe got 1% of a, a brand's marketing budget, maybe 10% if you were, you know, very aggressive. Um, and that's what you see, right? Only 175 that, that was ran by Audi car company, which obviously has a massive marketing budget. Um, so that makes sense. Um, but over the last five years, you finally saw influencer marketing, creator economy become legitimate. That means, that means they got more of the marketing budget. And now you're starting to see brands go, you know, holy shit, this actually works. Let's dump more of our marketing budget into it. And that's really good news for creators. And this is just the beginning. This year was probably the first year. 2021 was the first year where you probably saw maybe a 50-50 split of regular digital spend and influencer spend. Um, from our from our research, uh, and as you know, as you know, as that becomes bigger, or if influencers become part of the full marketing spend, those these dollars are just going to go up. And that's so, why, again, it goes back to the point where you know, do not give up on traditional networks because this is where the brands are going to spend the money. And for those that don't know, brands have a lot more money than the average fan of any YouTube or Instagram or Twitter creator. Brands obviously have a lot more money. Always will. And obviously, this is. Uh, do you see any any work concern that this number that these numbers could maybe go down in in twenty twenty two or is there, are you fairly optimistic that this could blow up even for even more and, and just like go to the moon. Yeah, we saw 20, I think I said earlier, 2,200, about 2,300 was the lead in 2020. Um, so that's up another you know, 30, 40% year over year to, to now. I don't see this changing at all. Um, you know, again, this is, you know, just one, this is the, these are U.S. numbers. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, as the world catches up as well, U.S. always leads with talent. South Korea is trying to fight us on that now with K-pop, but um, we just we have more people. Uh, way more creators. So I think as the world continues to adopt, it's just going to go up. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's still, what is it, Matt? 70%, 75% of, of creator earnings are still from the brand side of the house. I think it's even higher. Yeah. It, it may be it's at least 75% that. plus. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think this ultimately speaks to why your audience and ultimately a community is your most valuable asset, right? Um, like, because even if they don't watch something, but you have the relationship with them, you'll be able to you'll be able to leverage that, work with them, and monetize that. Like, you know, even if you didn't post another piece of content publicly, you still have that amazing relationship with those people, right? 
Um, and I do think that's why it's so important that more creators continue to formalize those relationships because that's the thing that they can leverage in multiple places, in multiple venues, with multiple partners, uh, including their own community, right? Like the community can also be part of that effort, right? Like I think that that's the, for me why Web3 is interesting is really co-working now with your own community to do things. Well, I, one point I do want to bring up on this, right, is is when creators do entertain brand deals of some kind, which I think all of them have to at some point, is they, they need to use it like a freelancer traditionally has used it, right? Maybe you did, you know, some type of gig work to, you know, Greg, I know you've talked about it where you do some type of traditional work to fuel your, you know, <laughs> to fuel Zealous, right? Like yep. that's how you should treat it. You should use the brand dollars then use the partnership dollars as a creator to fuel your audience growth. Mr. Beast has literally wrote the book on this. He wrote the creator Bible on taking brand money and doing these insane, you know, videos you know, and keep going up, up, and up, right? I mean, he used to spend 500K on a video. Now he spends 5 million. He gets that money. He's not, you know, that's not money that he makes himself. That's brand money. Yeah. I think uh, Clash of Clans, they they they, uh, they sponsored the, the Squid Games video. So it wasn't like they just put up the money. No, they took the money and they used it to drive audience growth. As a creator, that's not a bad thing. Don't look at like, oh, I have to do a brand partnership. I'm going to alienate you. You're not. Use it to gain more fans. If you think you're going to alienate them, you might gain, you know, you might gain more to make up for that. Right. Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely right. Um, and that's why, again, you can't, like, if you're going into Web3, don't cut off that arm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Web3 arm, right? Don't cut it off because you can. You still want to use both arms. Yeah. Right? None of these use it should, to fuel the other one. Yeah. None of these should be in, in lieu of each other, right? Like uh, these are all additive tools. <laughs> and I hope that's the biggest takeaway. And, and, you know, anyone listening, anyone watching takes from this is, you know, someone that does this every single day, right? You, you don't, don't cut it off just because you think the next great thing's coming, right? Transition into it. That's mm -hmm. if you have to learn to execute, that's what you need to execute on is learn how to transition to the next platform, the next, you know, the next, whatever the next thing is. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. What, what's coming next for fame pick? Like, I mean, when we talked like 20 episodes ago, like this is, Oh wow. It's already been that many episodes <laughs> seven or something like that. Like you were like the OG side. Right. And we, we, we learned about fame pick. Uh, we learned uh, like the, the representation side of things. And we learned yeah. that you're building out software where, where, how is FamePick going now, and what do we, what can we expect from FamePick uh, in the in the coming, in, well, not in the coming year, in this year? So we're we're really focused on creator education in terms of starting a business. So if you are a creator that's making money from creating content, which I think a lot of people in this space want to be, we want to help you manage that. Not, you know, not from like a stir angle where it's actually physically managing your money but helping you with the business elements, whether that's contract reviews, negotiating with brands, launching an event, right? Getting paid. Unfortunately, a lot of creators still have a, a really tough time getting paid. Um, that's something we're really focused on. Uh, you know, we might add a Web3 element there. If they want to collect their, you know, income in Bitcoin, like uh, Antonio Brown. Oh, I guess he's unemployed. Um, but, you know, who's the other guy? Uh, the Rams guy. Uh, Odell well, Beckham he gets paid in Bitcoin. Is accepting mm -hmm. Bitcoins, Andre Iguodala is accepting Bitcoin. Yeah. Or, yeah, a lot of more athletes are doing that, yeah. And so if that's the financial freedom you're looking for as a creator, uh, you know, we're going to try to help facilitate that. Um, but again, we're trying to just add legitimacy to this industry. We want, you know, brands to take, you know, their relationships with creators, you know, professionally and make sure creators act professional because they know it's a job. A lot of creators, you know, struggle with, making content for fun and making content as a job, right? That that's one of our biggest like kind of sticking points or sticky points that we teach creators. We manage, like if we manage you, right? We're helping you. You got to treat it like a job because we treat it like a job and the brands treat it like a job, right? They're, they have investors, board members, right. and shareholders to report to. Cool. Hmm. Anything, any final questions there, Greg? No, I think um, 
you know, I know uh, you're working on some news and so uh, we'll have you back again when, when that time comes as well. Um, but, uh, you know, feel free also, Matt, to, uh, if you haven't checked it out, fame pick awesome service. Um, we do encourage you to go, go check it out. Um, if you're a creator, obviously, I think you, you may want to chat with them. Um, but I also think, uh, you know, Matt, feel free to pop in, um, you know, uh, if you ever can on our Tuesday show, cause we've been, we've been exploring actually how startups can leverage web three. And I think that a lot of that overlaps significantly with how creators can do it as well. Um, you just got to send me a calendar invite, Greg. I just, <laughs> if it's on my calendar, I'm one of those guys. I'm one of those guys too. Forget. So I will send you, I will send you the recurring invite. So, you know, it's Thank there. You. Just no, I, I would love that. I'd love to see who's on. Um, yeah, we, the TV we, guide for uh, podcast. We we're working on that. Um, we did have a uh, you know even just this week we had Francine Hardaway, um, our friend, and we had another uh, new friend, uh, Megan guy from uh, she's, who's a VC, and we had a good interesting conversation. It was uh, as Francine said, it was more questions than anything else. But I think that that's sort of the time we're in right now, right? Um, but you know, it was interesting because we were talking about like we are transitioning to like, are there new ways to fund it? Actually today we were supposed to have uh, Marina couldn't make it this week. She'll be back. Uh, I think we're booked there for February 6th. Um, but she was one of the first creators to raise money from like, a, you know, from slow ventures to like actually yeah. like invest in her future um, uh, or her future earnings. I, I think that that's, I, the only person I imagine more invested in that than a VC is going to be her fan base. Right. And Finding ways to make that a reality for a lot of people, I think is just really powerful, right? Because um, you can get a win. A lot, so many people are looking for that win personally, right? Like, um, you know, and I think we think about the whole cottage industry, your whole pipeline of what it takes to produce content and to run a good community and all these other pieces. Your fans can be part of that. And if they can do that for 20 of the creators they love, they've got a full-time job also, right? Yeah. No, it's um, a, that's the ecosystem effect. That yeah. I think we're all working towards, right? The, this thing can be sustainable. We just need mm -hmm. to figure out ways to, to make it work. Yeah, without a doubt. So I, I um, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll see your face a bit more here uh, soon, but thanks for joining us. I know it was a little last minute, but we do appreciate you, you hopping in and obviously always great insights about the space. Anytime. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate exactly. it. All right. Uh, well, Ken, I think that's all we got today. Uh, I hope you've been doing a good job getting all the news together because, uh, <laughs> I'm um, just going to wing it. We'll just have Matt on the show again, and you know he'll just break us down on, on what the news is. Like, yeah, we'll to jump in at. <laughs> well, um, no, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, Ken does look at the news all day. That's actually his job. So, yeah. um, uh, and uh, it's not I purposely look at it. It's like it is part of my job, and I just find the point. I do have another job. Um, so, uh, so sometimes it keeps me a little busier, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of great creator news coming on as well. Uh, so check back in Friday morning, nine, uh, sorry, 8 AM Pacific time. We'll be back with creative briefs, uh, which is our weekly news show. Um, and if you want to get a preview of the links that are in there, head over to flipboard.com slash create at created economy, uh, where you can see all the news that Ken's been curating already, uh, while we work our way towards uh, Friday. So thank you all for being here. We appreciate your time and, uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. And if you, um, want to grab that AMA, just take a look in the uh, Twitter thread or over on our account, um, uh, create economy on Twitter. We shared a link to it. So without further ado, we will see you all next week. Goodbye and uh, have a great week. See you.